everyone, I'm Meredith and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm so excited that you found me and if you're returning, I'm so grateful you decided to come back and watch more. I love all things luxury. I love luxury shoes, I love luxury handbags, luxury lifestyle and vlogging and if they're things that appeal to you, I hope you'll do me a massive favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Hitting that subscribe button costs you absolutely nothing and means the world to me, so I hope you'll help me out. Today we're going to do a bit of a story time around my Hermes Paris experience. So as a lot of you know, especially those who follow me regularly know, I have just come back from a holiday in London and Paris. I went with my fabulous friend Dale from Dale's Addiction. She has a great channel here on YouTube. I will link her down below. Um, and we just had the best time um, and we are back now. And I know, I know. I know a lot of you are desperate for me to get into the unboxings and I promise they start in my next video. So this is going up Thursday Australian time um, and the unboxings will commence on Sunday Australian time and I am kicking off with my Hermes unboxing. So I thought it was important to give you guys the backstory before I start to unbox the items that I bought there. And I know a lot of you are interested in the story because it's an interesting one. So, um, uh, if you if you are interested in Hermes at all and you've ever been to Paris or you are thinking about going to Paris, you probably know that there's a lottery system in place in order to get appointments um, at the stores in Paris. You can't just walk in and have an appointment. It is very rare that you will get offered a bag in Paris if you haven't got a leather appointment. That doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Certainly people go in and spend vast sums of money and then say, oh, by the way, I'm after a bag and they get offered a bag. Um, but generally speaking, if you go in with a leather appointment um, through the lottery system, you have very high chances that you will get offered a quota bag that you want. Um, doesn't mean that always happens. Sometimes you might want something that they don't have. You might be very specific in what you want or they might just not have any stock. So these things do happen. But generally speaking, you enter the lottery system um, and if your name came, comes up, then you get an appointment and you go in and you have high chances that you will get a quota bag. The way my appointment worked was a little bit different to that. So I was provided what is called a VIP appointment. So I have um, status at the store that I usually shop at um, and it was um, the, an appointment was provided to me on that basis in Paris. So um, I had that set before I left. I knew that I had that appointment set up and it was set for the Monday. I didn't um, negotiate a time. I simply told, I simply said when I would be in um, Paris and this appointment was set up for me. So that day that we um, were going to the appointment, because I took Dale with me, <laughs> we were actually traveling from London to Paris. So I was up at 4.30 in the morning. I was out to the train station, onto the train with all my luggage, and I had far too much luggage for any normal person but that's normal for me. Um, but dealing with luggage on trains is very hard. Dale was a huge help. Um, and uh, so we caught the train, got off the train, dealt with my luggage, gone to the hotel, checked in, dumped our stuff and had lunch. I was heavily stressed by that point. Heavily, heavily stressed. I understand at the end of the day, these appointments and these bags um, in the grand scheme of things mean really nothing. Life is far more important than just handbags and appointments. However, I was in Paris. Um, it was a big deal for me to have the appointment and I did feel that weight of I really want this. I really want to be offered a bag. I really want something that I love to come from the Paris store to have had that experience of buying an Hermes bag in Paris. For somebody who never thought she would own an Hermes bag, um, it was, it, I, I really did feel the weight of that. And I understand that that's probably ridiculous to a lot of people, but it meant something to me. Um, so I was at lunch with Dale on the Champs-Élysées and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm heavily, heavily stressed. Like she could feel that coming from me. So she's trying to lighten the mood and trying to get me through. And, um, I tend to shut down when I get like that, like blinkers are on. I just, I don't function well. 
So we walked from the Champs Elysees down to the um, FSH store, which is the main store in um, Paris. And some of this has been in my vlogs. I will link all my uh, vlogs down below in the playlist that I've created for them in case you'd like to watch them. Um, and we went to the store. Now we got to the store and there's really not a lot of like big flashing signs that says this is where you check in. So I went around to the um, counter and I said, I have um, an appointment. And she's like, right, you want the person who's just around there. And then I didn't know where she meant. And I'm kind of wandering aimlessly. So we find someone who looks like they might be a person I need to check in with. Um, and I say, this is me, here's my email. I have an appointment and I show her my email and she's looking for me on the system and she can't find me. And then I'm hev then I'm I'm already in a state of stress, and that just I was like, here we go. I'm not going to have an appointment after all of this. I don't have an appointment. <laughs> this is not good. Um, so she goes and finds someone else, and he's nodding, and I'm like, well, nodding is a good thing. <laughs> that translates through all languages. Um, and he comes over and he gets me. He says, yes, yes, you have an appointment. Let me take you upstairs. And I was like, great. <laughs> tick that box. First hurdle has been jumped. We actually do have an appointment, so we'll go upstairs. Um, I was not dressed for this appointment. We'd been traveling that day. I was in a skirt and a t-shirt and a denim jacket. A lot of people get very dressed up for their appointments um, at Hermes. Um, and that's one of the things that you see regularly in YouTube videos. People say, if you want to score a bag, then dress like you deserve it. And I'm not one of those people. Um, I've never been like that. Um, so so I believe that I should speak for myself that my clothes don't make any real difference. And I was dressed quite casually because I had been traveling that day. I, I just didn't care. Um, so we um, were shown to a room um, and we could see that there were desks outside this room in a lounge and there were people sitting around looking at bags like they were clearly where they were having the leather appointments and then we walk towards this room that's got a door closed and they he slides the door of the room open and we walk in and there's pastries on the table and there's coffee cups and there's juice and there's flowers so it was a proper appointment like they were expecting me and I got quite emotional about that because I'd be under so much stress the relief that this was actually going to happen um, was um, certainly something I felt um, and yeah so I'll insert footage where I have it um, so you can see what we were met with but it was like okay I have an appointment this is great you okay? I'm a emotional <laughs> So we sit down um, and we wait. So next thing, the sales associate walks in. She's she's tiny. She's lovely. Um, she's French. <laughs> and she sits down behind the desk and she welcomes us and offers us tea and coffee and juice. Um, and we have some water because it's hot outside and we've been traveling. Um, and then she starts the appointment and she says, um, we believe, um, my manager has told me that you're interested in, and she rattles off, um, a range of things that I have purchased from Hermes previously. So she says, you'll be interested in watches, shoes. Um, uh, what else did she say? Ready to wear. Um, I'm not sure if she mentioned jewelry and something else. And I looked and I'm looking at her as she's saying this to me. And I say, and bags, because that was highly important to me. And she doesn't even acknowledge that comment from me. She just nods and, and is looking at her list of things that I'm going to be interested in. So she's like, and do you, so would you like to start in the watch department? It became incredibly clear to me at that point that this wasn't going to be just, oh, you can have a bag, that they were expecting me to shop. There was going to be an expectation that went with that. That didn't worry me so much because... I had always gone into an Hermes um, appointment, whether I had one or not, I would have gone into Hermes to shop regardless. I live in a, in a place where we have very few Hermes stores and the stock that we have here in Sydney can be very, very limited and very hard to get. It made sense that I would always want to shop in Paris because in my head, I thought they would have more stock in Paris because... Paris. <laughs> this is where they make the things. So of course they're going to have more stock. So it didn't worry me that they thought I would be buying other things because I had always planned to do that, but it did rub me the wrong way that it was so, um, 
it wasn't said to me. They didn't outwardly say it to me, but there was clearly an expectation that I would have to buy things. If I thought that I wanted, if I thought that I was going to get a bag, she was expecting me to buy things. That annoyed me um, a little bit. I don't like feeling like I'm backed into a corner, but it, ultimately I was going to shop anyway, so fine. So we went to the watch section. I looked at some of the watches. They have some very, very exceptional watches at Hermes, hand-painted things. The watches I have from Hermes are generally day-to-day -day watches. I love them. I've bought my husband watches. I've bought my father watches. They're stunningly beautiful watches, um, but nothing there I really wanted. So then we moved around to shoes. Um, they were coming into fall, winter, and we're coming into spring, summer here in Australia. There were a lot of dark colors. Um, we were looking at shoes that just weren't going to be appropriate. Um, and that's not to say I wouldn't have bought them if I loved them anyway, because seasons go around. We're going to come to fall, winter again, eventually anyway. But there was just nothing there. It was very dark and very heavy and nothing really jumped out at me. There was one pair of shoes that I did like um, and uh, you will have to wait and see what they look like. Um, and then we went round to ready to wear. Dale was asking for things in the shoe department as well, but they didn't have what she wanted either. We went round to ready wear and I thought, right, this is where I'm really going to get excited because ready to wear can be very hard to get in Sydney, especially in terms of sizing and what they have available. Um, so I thought this is it, like this is where I'm going to find ready to wear that I love and it comes in a range of sizes and I'm not going to have any issues. No, <laughs> no, no. So they had lots of pieces, beautiful, beautiful pieces. And I kept picking things up and I'd go, I really love this. Oh no, that's the only one we've got. It's a size 34. I am not a size 34. There is no way <laughs> I'm a size 34. Or I'd pick up something else and I'd go, what about this? And they'd go, no, no, that's the last one. Or we have one other, but that's a size 36. So they had lots of pieces they had very limited sizes, very, very limited sizes. So I found a few things and that gave her an idea of what I was looking at, which then allowed her to go check the stock out the back. Um, the whole time Dale is, is talking to the sales associate, I'm trying to talk to the sales associate and shop at the same time. It became evident to me that I don't think I was what she thought I was going to be. She was walking into a VIP appointment um, that had been set up um, and she had been given information by her manager. And I feel like she walked into the room, looked at me, looked at Dale. I'm pretty sure she thought Dale was the VIP. Dale was wearing a blazer and jeans. She was a bit more dressy than I was. Um, and I think I had thrown her at that point because it was me who was the VIP and I just don't feel like she knew what to do with me. There wasn't a connection there. There was no connection there. And I had, and she walked off to go and find some ready to wear. And I turned to Dale and I said, she hates me. She does not like me. Um, and Dale's just looking at me. I said, I, I can tell you that right now. She does not like me. Like she will tolerate me because I am, um, this is a VIP appointment at the end of the day. I said, but I don't know what my chances of getting a bag are at this point when she clearly, I don't feel any warmth from her. I don't feel like she's connected in any way. I like, I, I don't particularly, it wasn't that I didn't like her. I just didn't feel anything from her. And I most certainly got the feeling from her. She didn't like me. So that was, that was tough for me because I generally have, amazing sales associates. I have some of the best sales associates I could ever hope to have. I had met sales associates on this trip prior to that who I adored. I had met Shao in Fendi in New Bond Street. He was just this amazing, fun person. I met James at Louis Vuitton um, on New Bond Street, who is Deb from Wild Unfiltered um, and Amelia from Amelia Rose's Closet SA. I will link both their channels down below. But James at... Um, Louis Vuitton at New Bond Street was just the nicest, nicest man. Um, I had, I had 
I generally build amazing relationships with sales associates. I have been incredibly lucky in that way. So to come up against a sales associate that I just couldn't connect with, I struggled. I really struggled with it. And I was already under all this stress that I'd put myself under about this appointment. And I, I could feel myself crumbling in that moment. Like this isn't going to happen because she doesn't like me. Like this is, this is all over at this point. So she's off looking for clothes. I'm explaining this to Dale, who's you know, she, Dale understands Hermes, but she had not shopped Hermes um, regularly at that point. So she was a bit confused by the whole thing. Um, but she could see that I was not feeling great about the appointment at that point. Um, so we walked around for a bit. We looked at some of, we went downstairs and looked at some of the um, SLGs. Dale asked about a Calvi and the man literally said, we have no Calvies. None. And Dale's looking at me like, none? And he and like he, he meant none in the entire store, not a single Calvi, which is mind blowing to me in a store of that size in Paris. Um, so we made our way back up to the VIP room. Um, my sales associate bought um, some things for me to look at, um, the shoes that I had expressed an interest in, some ready to wear. I talked about some other stuff. Dale was off looking at other things for me and was making suggestions. Um, and through all of this, while I'm trying things on and looking at things, Dale switched gears into what she does very well, which is build relationships because that is essentially who she is and um, it's also her line of work. So she switched gears and she started to build a relationship with this sales associate and she worked incredibly hard on that because she knew that I couldn't connect with her so Dale was going to connect with her instead. So Dale started to just have this really relaxed conversation with her and start to build a relationship and some rapport with this sales associate and then I felt the sales associate relax. But she wasn't relaxed into me, she was relaxed into Dale. Um, so I was still there. She was still dealing with me, but she most certainly had the connection with Dale and not with me. Um, so I chose some things and I will unbox them all for you. Um, and then I, and then I said, bags, uh, I wasn't going to waste my time. If she wasn't going to give me one, I wanted to be done and move on to other things in Paris and get past this feeling of stress that I had about the whole thing and just be done. Um, at which point she said to me, what do you want? So I'm like, well, that's a good sign. At least she's asking me what I want. She's not saying, no, we don't have anything. So I expressed what I wanted. I gave her my wish list. I talked about what I had. She couldn't have cared less. Um, she was only listening to what I wanted. Um, and I said, okay, well, these are the things I want. So she's making notes. I can see her making notes on her phone. And she's like, okay. And then she turns to Dale. <laughs> Dale who has no interest in Hermes whatsoever, um, has never expressed an interest in Hermes, will not play the game, and says to Dale, so what do you want? That's really unheard of um, in an appointment. Generally speaking, the person whose appointment it is is the only person who gets offered a bag. Um, it is a testament to how hard Dale had worked to build a relationship with this woman that she and she liked Dale so much that she was going to offer Dale a bag also. So it was whole back and forth between them two. And you can watch Dale's um, video on that when she puts it up and she'll do a whole commentary around how her offer unfolded. Um, but the sales associate walked off and um, came back with tower of boxes and started to show us things. And the first thing she brought out was my quota bag. Um, and um, it was perfect. <laughs> there is no other word for it. Perfect. I was thrilled and happy and so excited and I love it in every way and I can't wait to unbox it for you guys. It's perfect. Um, so yes, she got that out. And then she had also said to me, and what non-quota bags do you want? So I had told her what I was after. Um, as it turned out, spoiler alert, none of the non-quota bags she offered me, I took, I, I wasn't fussed on them. They just didn't have what I wanted. Um, and I wasn't willing to spend thousands of dollars on something that really I, I wasn't fussed on. So I didn't come away with a second bag, but I could have. I could quite easily have picked up a second bag had I wanted it and had I been very open and said, just give me anything. They most certainly had things, but I was very specific in my non-quota bag about what I wanted and they just didn't have any. So that's fine. They also offered Dale a non-quota bag also. So she got two offers out of it. Um, and yeah, so we wrapped up and paid for it and I walked away with some beautiful, beautiful pieces. Um, and I'm looking forward to unboxing them for you guys. 
So there's a few takeaways from this. Um, so I, I continue to say I got a bag because of Dale. To be fair, I don't know. I, I don't know had Dale not been there and had she not put the work in, had would they not have offered me a bag? The chances are, I think they probably still would have. It was a VIP appointment at the end of the day. Um, I did hold some kind of status with them. I think that she probably, regardless of the fact she might not have liked me, probably would have been compelled to offer me a bag no matter what. Now, I could be very wrong about that. She could have knuckled down and just said, no, I don't want to give you one. Um, but nonetheless, I think, I think given the type of appointment it was, I probably would have been offered a bag anyway, but we'll never know. I think that Dale doing the hard work that she did to build the relationship and build a rapport most certainly worked out well in her favor, um, and certainly helped me with what I wanted. So she's a very good friend for that. And I'm incredibly grateful to her for putting those hard yards in to build a relationship with somebody that I certainly couldn't connect with. Um, uh, the other takeaways that I have from this experience is they don't have any stock. Like I was amazed at how little stock they had. When we went downstairs to pay for our purchases, Dale mentioned to the sales associate that, um, like we'd asked about Calvies and there weren't any there. And she literally went over and opened all the drawers, like six drawers, and they were completely empty. There was not a single one there. I asked about some silks. They didn't have them. None of the sizing for ready to wear was there. Like I was surprised at how little stock Hermes in Paris had. Now this was the FSH store. I didn't go to any of the other stores. I don't know what their stock was like, but they had no stock. And I found that amazing. Like I thought of all the stores, they would have so much stock. So that tells me that Hermes worldwide really is not hugely stocked, but that's the way they like it because it breeds um, exclusivity um, and this need to get pieces and be on it all the time. So that's their marketing strategy and it's working very well for them. But to see it in real life in Paris was quite shocking to me. Um, apparently not all sales associates will gel with you <laughs> um, or even try and gel with you. I literally said to this sales associate, can I have your card in case I come back to Paris? And she refused. <laughs> That's how much she didn't like me. She didn't give me her details. She didn't want anything to do with me after that appointment. Um, and I wasn't unpersonable. I wasn't not nice. I was exactly as I always am. So I don't know what it was about me she didn't like, but she clearly didn't like me. Um, for whatever reason. So the fact that I had said to her, can I have your card detail? Can I have your details in case I come back to Paris? And she said, no, you'll need to set it up the same way you did this time. I was like, well, that's really telling to me. And I, and I really wonder, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't think of it at the time, but I really wonder if Dale had got her aside and said, can I have your details? If she would have given them to Dale, because she did very much like Dale. So that was a really interesting thing to have happen. It was quite jarring for me to be in that situation um, where I was clearly not liked um, and I didn't understand why. It's not that I've never not been liked in my life. I most certainly have been. It was just in that environment for no reason at all. When I am always incredibly nice to sales associates that I'm meeting, um, I just, I didn't understand why. And I always find that really hard. So yeah, it was an interesting experience, but I came away with things that I love. I came away with a bag that makes my heart sing and brings me so much joy. Um, so that is my experience in Paris. It is an unusual one because I understand most people have to go in with the lottery system. Um, I'm grateful that having had that experience, I now also have a purchase history in Paris. So if I ever go back, that is on my file there in Paris. They do not share um, your files between Paris and other stores. That's important to note because there's been rumors that that was happening. They don't do it. So, and the reason the sales associate said to us, the reason we don't do that is because if you get a quota bag here, it would then remove your chances of getting one in your home store. So people don't like it. So we don't do it. So that was really interesting to me that just because I get the, the quota bag there in Paris doesn't mean it alleviates my options to get a quota bag in 
Sydney, which is my home store. So I had, I got this one earlier in the year. I've now got this one from Paris. I could essentially maybe get a second one this year, although it's quite late in the year now. I don't think I will. It'll probably be next year. But that was interesting to me that they aren't sharing files across, um, like outside of Paris. So, but I do have a purchase history now in Paris. So I've ever go back and I get a leather appointment that exists there. Um, so it was, it was an interesting experience. If you are in a situation where you get the lottery experience, it will be very different for you. No one's going to be standing there going, well, what else are you buying? Um, I found that really confronting for me because while you know it in your head that that might be a marketing strategy and an expectation in your home store with Hermes, I just wasn't prepared for it at Par in Paris. I wasn't prepared for it to be so blatantly obvious that I had to spend money in order to earn the bag. And I found that really jarring because even in my home store, that's never communicated to me. It might be something that I know in the back of my mind um, that you need to show appreciation for the brand, that you need to shop the brand in order to be offered the quota bags. But to have it so blatantly laid out for me was really jarring for me. Um, so yeah, they're, they're all my takeaways from my Hermes appointment. Am I happy with what I got? Most certainly. Am I happy for my friend Dale? Absolutely. I am stoked for her. Um, she really did work hard to build the relationship with his sales associate. I am incredibly grateful to her for my entire trip, but I am also grateful to her that she, she really talked me down. And I need to stop crying every time I talk about Dale because when I cry, she cries. <laughs> I know she'll watch this and tear up. Um, <clears throat> so I need to thank Dale for talking me down off the ledge that day because I was I was heavily, heavily stressed because I was so invested in the appointment, which is stupid. Um, and for, you know, dealing with me while I was dur during the appointment when I was like, she hates me. I don't understand why. I don't know how to fix this. I'm not going to get a bag. And that crashing feeling of this isn't going well. And she got me through that. And then she did the hard yards to build the relationship that I clearly couldn't. So I'm, I'm just grateful that I had her there. So maybe the takeaway from all of this is if you do get appointments in Paris, um, or if you are shopping in Hermes in Paris, take a friend take a really good friend. Like everyone says, take your husband, but my husband would have been useless to me in that situation anyway. Um, and he wouldn't have enjoyed it. So if you do have the opportunity to go to Paris with friends and you get an appointment, take your friend with you because they tend to be your support system, especially in those situations. Cause they understand that although this is just a bag or it's just a thing that it does mean a lot to you and they will help you regulate your emotions in that situation. <laughs> Um, I hope this helps someone. If nothing else, I hope you found it interesting and I hope that you are subscribed because there are so many Paris unboxings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. There's a few. There's a few unboxings coming. So make sure you're subscribed. If you've liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. It means a lot to a content creator when you hit that subscribe button. Please also hit the little bell notification so you know when I've uploaded videos, which is usually three times a week. I'll also throw up my Instagram handle for you so you can come follow me over there. I put lots up in real time, lots around my collection and my day-to-day -day life. So please come follow me there. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you are having a fabulous day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>